John Cena, the 16-time world champion, the face that runs the place, the Babe Ruth of the WWE, Roman Reigns, the current universal champ, head of the table, the tribal chief. Both men have proven over the years that not only are they future WWE Hall of Famers, but two of the biggest stars of the WWE today. For years, fans have predicted that a match between the two would be nothing short than a WrestleMania headliner main event dream match. But on September 24, 2017, at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, with 16,106 in attendance, that dream match became a reality. Today, we look back at the highly anticipated feud between John Cena and Roman Reigns. Part 1. The Build-Up On the August 21st, 2017 episode of Monday Night Raw, Kurt Angle revealed the big name WWE Superstar that was coming to Monday Night Raw, and it was none other than John Cena. Cena explained that why he came back to Monday Night Raw was not because SmackDown was bad, but because he wanted to step in this ring and face a certain WWE superstar. Out came the big dog himself, Roman Reigns, where he told Cena that now that you're in my yard, the question is, are you going to run your mouth to my face? What looked like the fight was about to happen between the two men, out comes the IC champ, The Miz, and his mistress, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Miz proceeds to cut what was an amazing promo, one that I highly recommend you go back and watch. Miz is talking about how Cena and Reigns already had their moment and suddenly had their moment. I've been waiting for my moment for over 10 years. When am I going to get my moment? After all that, Cena then decides to have a little tag team match, player. Then out comes Samoa Joe. I actually thought it was really cool seeing Cena and Joe in the same ring, considering the fact that they were in the same classes back at Ohio Valley Wrestling, also known as OVW. The fact that those two never had a one-on-one -on -one encounter to this day still shocks me, especially with Samoa Joe getting released. But anyways, John Cena and Roman Reigns would end up winning the tag team match later in the night. Tension still visible upon both men. On the August 28, 2017 episode, the No Mercy match between the two men would be official in a contract signing. You know that final scene from 8 Mile where B-Rabbit Eminem just completely destroyed Papa Doc, who we all know and love, Captain America? Well, this contract signing was no exception. Cena straight up murdered Roman Reigns, calling him a cheap-ass, corporately created John Cena bootleg. Reigns then proceeds to come back at Cena by saying that they boo you because first of all, you suck, and second, and there, right there, was the exact moment that Roman Reigns forgot his lines. Cena would use this to his advantage by telling Reigns, it's called a promo, kid. If you want to be the big dog, you got to learn how to do one, so go ahead. Cena proceeds to scream, Use a fourth wall, obviously, with this segment being a work shoot. Reigns finally responds by saying that the reason why they boo you is because they see right through you. You're a phony. You're a yes man that can learn how to do anything or be anything. So if you wrap all that up, you're just a fake bitch. He then proceeds to call John Cena a part-time and fake-ass bitch, and then proceeds to tell Cena that he is going to use that big chalette big ass shovel and bury as much talent as he possibly can and you know even though Cena won pretty much this entire segment no the whole segment Reigns actually had a point I mean Cena did use that shovel to bury a lot of talent and careers cough cough Nexus cough cough Wade Barrett cough cough SummerSlam 2010 but despite all that, Cena would then finish off the already murdered Roman Reigns by saying, you should be ashamed that I'm a part-timer. I can do this part-time better than you could ever do it full-time. After the match was official, Gals and Anderson would then soon make their arrival, leading to a tag team match with Cena and Reigns getting the win. 
The next week on September 4th episode, Kurt Angle gave his legitimate son, I don't know why they went with this storyline, his legitimate son, Jason Jordan, a match between Cena, where the two men had a really great matchup. With Cena picking up the win, Reigns would then come out and proceed to question if Cena lost a step after what taking what seemed like forever to be Jordan. When Reigns challenged Cena to a fight then and there, Cena gracefully, gracefully backed away with Reigns saying, you're all talk, John, and that's why I don't respect you. On the next week on the September 11th episode of Monday Night Raw, Reigns would actually end up taking the fight to Jordan in what was another great match with Reigns picking up the W. After the match, Reigns gave respect to Jordan, and then it was Cena's turn to come out with another war of words between the two men. Cena at the end saying to Reigns, at no mercy, continuing as a drug test, Holmes, you ain't getting past me, which was an automatic shot at Roman Reigns' drug test when he got suspended back in 2016, which was just another crazy line at, again, the already murdered Roman Reigns. It was kind of like at this point, stop, Cena, stop. He's already dead at this point. Later on in the night, for the first time ever, John Cena took on Braun Strowman with Cena winning by no DQ. Now, this match was actually able to protect both Strowman and Cena from getting a pinfall loss, especially with Braun challenging Lesnar for the Universal title in the main event of the same show. On the September 18th episode, which was the Raw Go Home show before the No Mercy pay-per-view on Sunday, Roman Reigns came out to deliver one final message to Cena before their match. Reigns stated that he didn't have to look like John because if he did, he wouldn't even have a career here. You don't believe me? Ask, ask Alex Riley about that, which was a callback to the backstage heat between Cena and Riley, which led to Riley getting buried. Reigns then proceeded to call Cena the biggest hypocrite that has ever stepped foot in a WWE ring. He then called a flashback from 2012 with Cena calling out his cousin, The Rock, for not being there. And then Cena stating that he will always be there. Reigns then tells the San Jose crowd, should we bring John Cena out? So we bring Cena out here, San Jose? Oh wait, it's not going to happen because John's not here. Reigns then proceeds to lay in one final jab at Cena by saying, I'll see you Sunday, movie star. Part 2, The Match. After weeks of jabs, insults, and built, the match between the pair finally took place at the 2017 No Mercy event. In my opinion, especially how the main event went, with Braun Strowman taking one F5 after months of building him up as this dominant monster, and he loses to 1F5. Sorry, little small vent. I feel as though Cena and Reigns should have main evented, especially since they were literally the match before the Cruiserweight match. And who was the Cruiserweight match, I might add? Enzo and Neville. Even though Enzo pretty much took 205 Live, carried 205 Live, and made 205 Live relevant. Cena would then make his entrance first, coming out to a crowd with a mixed reaction. With Reigns making Cena wait a bit, Reigns also came out with a mixed reaction, mostly him getting booed as well. The match then begins with a headlock, but Cena proceeds to leave the ring as he was trolling the crowd as he cheered Cena leaving. Reigns then goes after Cena and connects with a right hand. Now, I'm not going to go back move for move, match, you know, all that shit, because obviously, you know, we're going to be here all night. But if you do, you can go back and watch this match not only on the Peacock app, but you can also watch this match to actually full in its entirety on YouTube. But anyways, later in the match, Roman Reigns would then come off the rope only for Cena to catch him in the midair and hit him with the AA, the attitude adjustment, one, two, Reigns kicks out. After this, Reigns tries to go for a spear, only for Cena to move out of the way. Reigns hitting the shoulder in the post. Cena setting up a super AA. One, two, Reigns kicks out. Then later on the announcer table, Cena tries to hit another AA onto Reigns. Only this time, Reigns to counter. Hits Reigns, hits Cena's with the spear. 
crowd goes nuts. Back in the ring, Reigns tries to finish Cena once and for all. Only Cena to counter and hit not one, but two AAs. One, two, Reigns kicks out again. After both men lay on the ground for a few minutes, Reigns and Cena get back up. Reigns hits the Superman punch on Cena and hits the spear. One, two, three, Reigns wins. For me, this was the match of the night. Now, some people loved the match, some people hated it, but for me, this was a really good match. The only real problem that I really have with this match, though, was that the kickouts. I mean, come on, like, the kickouts. You had Roman Reigns kicking out not one, not two, not three, but four AAs. I understand that John Cena's AA finisher is at the point where everybody can kick out him now. But Jesus Christ, you don't have to have Roman Reigns kicking out of four. Like, come on now. Like, that was just too much. After the match, both men shook hands as a sign of respect. And Cena then raised Reigns' arm in the air as this was the sign as the official passing of the torch from Cena to Reigns. After Reigns leaves, Cena stands in the ring looking over the crowd as 16,106 fans in attendance that night chanted, Thank you, Cena. Thank you, Cena. Thank you, Cena. Cena then proceeds to go over to a young fan at ringside, gives him his wristband. Looking back at the crowd one last time, Cena gives also the salute and then raises his arm into the air as he goes to the back. Part three, the aftermath. On Raw Talk, when asked what his future was like in the WWE, Cena began to get a little emotional with saying that even though transitions are, are really tough and hard, they are absolutely wonderful at the same time. He went on to praise Reigns and say that he'll be back like Batman. Whenever they shine that John Cena symbol, he'll come back running. The next night, Reigns labeled his win over Cena the biggest W of his career and went into a feud with The Miz, which led to, to the reunitement of The Shield, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and also it led to Roman Reigns winning the Intercontinental title for the first time in his career, making him officially a Grand Slam champion. Obviously, the, this feud was made wonders for one reason and one reason only, to once again build up Roman Reigns as the top number one guy in the company. You know, looking back at this match, it's actually crazy how much Reigns evolved because looking at this feud, looking how they were in the promo battles, Cena destroyed Reigns. I mean, Reigns really couldn't get a comeback at all. He had a few jabs, but at the end, it wasn't really that effective on Cena. It just goes to show you how pushed they had Roman Reigns down our throats. And it's just crazy how much Reigns was exposed here. And this is coming from a guy who... Even during that time period, I was still a fan of Roman Reigns. Obviously, this is nothing compared to what Reigns is like now in 2021, where, like I said earlier, he is the tribal chief. He is the head of the table. He is the current universal champion. He is quite possibly the biggest star in professional wrestling. It just goes to show you how much Reigns evolved. So that has been my John Cena and Roman Reigns feud. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I wanted to make a video like this because this is a feud that I'm surprised that a lot of YouTubers in the YWC hasn't really talked about. Like, they talked about it when it first happened and then it just went on. So I was like, what the hell? Might as well make a video about it. Anyways, this has been the Kid DC Wrestling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, comment. Put in the comment section what did you think about the John Cena and Roman Reigns feud and so on. Yeah.